I received a really sweet email from an eighth grader in Ontario, Canada, who's working on an essay for school. And this eighth grader had seen my video about the association of the use of cell phones in breast cancer. And if you need to review that, it's on breast cancer answers. But I was really touched by this email. This eighth grader is working on an essay and wants to know more about this potential association of cell phone use and breast cancer. And as part of my response back to this eighth grader, I've also done some additional research on the subject. Now, what I shared before, I wanna share again. There have been a few, what we call anecdotal cases, sporadic, maybe is a better word, cases of women placing their cell phone inside their bra for time periods up to five years. These have been very, very sporadic little case reports. Actually, two of them came from here in Orange County uh, by one of my uh, uh, colleagues who also works at St. Joseph Hospital. Now, what, what's the potential danger of uh, cell phones for whether it's breast or brain or here on the side of the face called the parotid gland? Well, cell phones put out energy, radio frequency energy, and they can heat tissue if they're too close. And study after study, the, the big issues, particularly coming out of Europe, about uh, cell phone use increasing the risk of brain tumors. I think that's the most I've been able to find in the literature. A few things also about the parotid gland here by, because we hold the cell phone so close to us, etc. What's the bottom line out of all these studies that have been looked at? There is no direct link between cell phone use and brain cancer, parotid cancer, and this business of breast cancer. These are just little sporadic cases, so we can't say, but I'll get back to that one in a minute. Now, what these studies are all saying is we can't say that the use of cell phones causes cancer, nor can we say that it absolutely doesn't. So therefore, there's all sorts of important recommendations about cell phone use, particularly in younger people, particularly in children. Uh, one of the important recommendations for children is that they should only use their cell phones uh, for emergencies. Uh, number two, a lot of people are recommending now putting one of the earplugs in, connecting it on a, on a little cord down to your cell phone or using the speakerphone on your cell. The little things that you wear in your ear with the little mic down here at the side, you gotta remember something. That's putting out energy too. Uh, it may not be as much RF energy as the cell phone itself, but it's also through the Bluetooth connection putting out energy. So what I personally do is I use my speaker as much as I can, or I do the plug-in earpiece uh, up to my ear. Now, I don't know where to go further on this issue of breast cancer and cell phones other than I would absolutely warn women, please don't put your cell phones inside your bra. And if you do, do it only for a short period of time. Don't put it always at the same place. These few little sporadic cases that I've read about, there were long-term uses of cell phone in the same place all the time, five years or longer. Was it coincidence that the cancers developed in those exact spots or was it causative? I can't give you the answer. But like every new technology, uh, we've always got to be careful. And I would ask my eighth grader in Ontario, Canada, hey, let me know how your essay went, okay? Good luck. Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Harness, and I want to share with you important information that I believe that every newly diagnosed patient with breast cancer needs to know. I'm a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. And I want every woman to know about personalized breast cancer treatment and the genomic test. A test that helps guide a woman and her doctor to the best treatment options for her. Pass it on.